Hey, man, you getting tired of me yet or what? <laughs> Third time lucky. Let's go. Well, this time I've finally seen the movie, dude. Congratulations on uh, on killing it, man. Thank you so much, man. I, I can't wait for everybody to sort of just to watch this in the cinemas. It's been a long time coming. It's, it's definitely one for the big screen. And, uh, dude, I want to talk about the, the personal journey you go on in this film. Uh, it's centered around family, a couple of different, different family stories. Uh, and I'm not going to give away too much, but with you being a father to a little girl now, uh, I'm curious, with, with fatherhood impending while you were making this film, did that add any perspective to what you were doing with Snake Eyes? I think it definitely, in retrospect, it, it, it definitely does affect, because we see right at the beginning of, uh, you know, this origin story, who Snake Eyes is as a man and kind of like the, the crazy stuff that he had to go through personally, um, but still pick himself up and and have this goal of vengeance that's burned into him. How can a man like that turn things around? There has to be a good enough cause and an open enough arms to have someone like that change his kind of train of thought. And that's bound in the Arashikage. And that, that, that place gives him the purpose that I think he's been uh, sort of yearning for and needing. And so to, to sort of imagine any kid to go through kind of what he did as a kid, of course, it's going to sort of sky him for the rest of the life. Um, but, uh, but I think it was really important to have that layered in throughout the movie because we didn't want it just to be one dimensional, not just like a beat em up action. We needed to have the cause and effect of everything. Yeah, I, that, that, the, the parallels I imagine are pretty pretty cool for the timing of your life. Uh, I want to know, I know a lot of these franchises, when you get cast in a role like this, they keep secrets. They might not even tell you who you're playing. Did you know this was Snake Eyes from the from day one? Luckily, uh, yes, I, I, I knew exactly what it is. And, and I received the call from sort of Paramount uh, that they were exploring um, sort of casting and, and they wanted to sort of gauge my interest. Um, and it was something that I was like, wow, this is like a crazy um, expedition in rebooting a, a franchise like this. It has to be done right. So my first question was like, I'd love to meet with Robert. I want to hear his vision. I want to understand where he wants to take this. Um, and so we went for a coffee. Um, he laid it all out and he was like, look, I don't want to make uh, a generic film that anybody can sort of just like watch and be like, oh, yeah, the action was great. We wanted to make the character the leading draw to this, the endearment of the audience members to Snake Eyes, um, to his mission and for them to be like, oh, man, this guy's like this guy's a bit of an asshole in the beginning. But like it takes you to understand that to see how far he develops and how far he, what he sacrifices to become the bigger and better version of who he is. Yeah. So listen, you and I have talked a lot about GI Joe possibilities and, and where this could all go in the future. Now I want to do a little fantasy uh, with you. Let's go. If you could take this GI Joe character in this world and have it cross over with any other franchise in the world, Marvel, DC, Transformers, Jurassic Park, Fast and Furious, I don't care. Oh. What do you think would be the most outrageous, most fun thing to see <laughs> Snake Eyes get in the ring with that group of characters and those cast members? What would you say about a uh, a side by side Dom and uh, Snake Eyes going to the moon in their uh, in, one on his motorbike, uh, Toretto in his uh, in his crazy charger or whatever? Um, let's do that. Let's fast and furious time Snake Eyes. You guys got family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, yeah, dude, thank you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, dude, thank you so much for the time. I can't wait for the world to see this movie. Appreciate it. Take care. Give JC some love for me over there. Thanks, Brandon. Take care. <laughs> Andrew, Thanks, Coach. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, I'm good, man. How are you doing? I'm good, dude. I appreciate you taking the time to talk again. You're, dude, you're, you're hands down oh. my favorite part of the movie as Storm Shadow. I really oh, thank you so much, man. <laughs> thank you, man. Um, are you a GI Joe fan? You, you are. Uh, you, yeah? Uh, yeah, I am. I'm. Uh, I'm not going to say I'm a crazy fanatic who knows everything about it, but I am a fan. Yeah. I've watched the movies. I've read a lot of the comics. I scooped up a lot of the comics when I was preparing for this movie, and there's some dope stuff yeah. in there. And I feel like we're on the tip of the iceberg with something really cool. Oh, that's cool, man. Okay, good, good. Dude, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is the, this is the interesting part of the process, finding out how other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome, man. I think th yeah. I think people who have been lifelong GI Joe fans 
are going to really appreciate what you did with Storm Shadow, with Tommy, dude. I think so. Oh, my God. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> cool. I think so. I don't want to speak for anybody, but I think I think people are going to appreciate it. But, like, Storm and yeah. Snake, man, that's that relationship. Like, they're brothers. They're enemies sometimes. Um, they've, they've covered every bit of that relationship spectrum in this expanded lore, and now we get to break into it with teases of some of that coming later on. I don't want to spoil anything. What is, yeah. What's the most fun version of that relationship, in your opinion, to play opposite Henry? Oh, what's the most uh, fun version? I I, I think, um, oh God, yeah, I, I think, I don't know, I just want to go through all the, sorry man, it's just, this is such, because it is such a rich, uh, there's so much you could explore. Brothers are such an in, uh, interesting thing, especially blood brothers, and then and then the, 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 the training that they went through, etc. I think that um, the rivalry I want to see more of, I want to see them more fight each other. I'd love to see a big Storm Shadow versus uh, 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 Snake Eyes fight against each other, really testing each other's skills, you know. Uh, that would be cool. Um, and, uh, you know, I'd love, you know, and maybe a different kind of one, one that's not um, uh, to the death, and then another one which maybe is. Uh, but then I think the, the psychology behind that, I think that's what would be interesting. I don't know, because we're talk thinking about sequels going forward, but it's like, you know, maybe they've got different philosophies as well in life and then exploring that as well and clashing head on. Anyway, okay. Oh, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm already now. Now you've got me begging for a two and three and four and a straight up Storm Shadow yeah. movie, man. But you, you did, you get like the white suit, the two swords. Like, I mean, Storm Shadow in comics and in toys has a lot of iconic like lore and poses and, and props. And you bring all that, not all of it, enough of it to just one movie to start with like was there anything specifically in terms of the character on the inside that you wanted to bring out that you have seen in other mediums man uh yeah so for this i just uh, i knew um it was important for me as a as a, a, a person of japanese heritage to portray uh, it uh, in a way that i would want to see uh, like a kid growing up you know my, a younger version of me would be able to be ah that's that's you know the, the empowerment you know for them and i think um so yeah i mean there's, there's there was there was a lot that i wanted to 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 do with tommy what was the what was the main part of the christian um uh, uh, was there anything about his character who he is as a person that you really wanted to emulate and, and make sure that came through yeah, I, I guess I wanted the because um, the, the the samurai culture and we did a lot of research on I did a lot of research on on the samurai culture etc. Um, and I think um, uh, it was more about the kind of bushido uh, you know the parallel the arash kage code but the bushido code uh, and his kind of a, a, a gradual kind of um, decline uh, from that you know and and the breaking yeah. of the psyche kind of thing the person who becomes. I won't say bad, but yeah, that, yeah, there's lots, there's lots. It's quite a rich character to explore. Oh man, dude, like, I mean, like, I wanted to show you that I've got these books here with me right now. I'm traveling. I, I came yeah. out to LA just to see the movie. Like, there's so much I want to see, and I'm sure you, as this character, there's like, have you, have you guys fantasized and talked? Like, I know there's the tease at the end that I'm not going to spoil. But yeah. if you do get to do this again, you know, have you had those conversations about stuff you want to see? We, we, we haven't had those conversations yet. I think they, they take it one at a time. Um, but I do have uh, an idea if they do ask me. Firstly, I want to uh, talk with Larry more. Um, and then I want to talk to the fans more about where, just kind of gather it up and get the essence of, of where they think it would, it would go. Um, also, I'd love to see him in, you know, the classical, the, the different looks that he's got. The hooded look, the one with the bow and arrow. You know, I'd love, <laughs> I was yeah. going to say the bow and arrow, dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I, love Listen, that. I have to let you go. I can yeah, do this okay. all day with you, man. I hope we get to talk again more after the movie comes out. But enjoy, dude. Yeah. Congrats on being a great part of this movie. Oh, thank you so much, man. Thank you. Thanks. Hello, Samara Weaving. How are you? Hi, Brandon. How are you? I am great. Thank you for uh, taking the time to talk about Snake Eyes with me. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, yeah. so I want to I want to talk to you about Scarlet. This is a character that first debuted in 1982. And I want to hear for you, what was your introduction to Scarlet? And what were some of the things you were like, I want to bring that to the movie? Um, my first introduction was, her, was the script. Um, I'd heard of G.I. Joe and the universe, but I, hadn't, I didn't really know the ins and outs of it. And so um, prepping for it was really interesting and reading about, I didn't really, like, she's such an insane resume she was a lawyer and then she went to military school and she moved around as a kid so um i think in the comics she's you know she 
she's a leader and a teacher and she is there to save the day. Like she's just really cool. Um, so I wanted to bring some of that kind of wit that she has because she's quite funny in the comics too. So I wanted to bring a little bit of a sense of humor with her as well. Yeah, I think you did that really well. I, I love seeing you in this part. Honestly, like I was just, well, this was a question I had for later, but you talked about her backstory. Uh, I've also been a Marvel fan. It took Black Widow 10 years of being a supporting character to get her own movie. We're finally seeing female characters get a chance to emerge. I want to see more of Scarlet. How do we fast track? What do we have to do to get you just a straight up Scarlet story? I don't know. I don't know what to do. That would be really cool, though. That would be awesome to see like Scarlet and the Baroness, because I think they have some, or like in the script, it kind of hinted at that they knew each other before. So that would be cool to see. You and Ursula had a pretty electric chemistry there, and I would love to see more of that. How did you guys kind of develop a bit of a rivalry there to, to play with? We got along so well. She, I mean, I remember I walked into the hotel and she was texting me straight away saying, you know, like, let's hang out, let's go and do things. She is such an electric light of a human being. She's so funny. She makes me laugh so She's one of the funniest human beings I've ever met. Um, so we just got along straight away. So I think the fact that we got along, we could easily be really mean to each other because we felt really comfortable with one another. And we would always we would try to make the other person laugh or, you know, we would play games with each other on set, which was really fun. <laughs> We love having fun at work. I'll allow it. I love yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a relationship and and some some action stuff. I'd love to see developed in the future. <laughs> uh, and you listen in just this first movie, you do get to bring out the iconic crossbow, the weapon of choice that uh, Scarlet loves to use in all the yeah. lore. You're no stranger to action, but Snake Eyes really, I feel like it brings a lot of unique uh, action into play. Uh, did it challenge you? Did you have to learn anything specific to prep for this? Yeah, it was really challenging um, at first because I, I realized I had done a lot of stunts, but I didn't have to play someone. Like with Nyx, I was, I'd only played one other character where I had to be really skilled at it. You know, in Ready or Not or, you know, other sort of like yeah. Adverse Evil Dead, like I just got beaten up so I could sell hits really well, but actually learning almost like a dance, like choreography for a fight was um, a new sort of skill that I hadn't really done on sets before, or not to that extent anyway. Um, so that was really fun. But luckily Jackie Gertz, who um, has been my stunt double for years, um, they brought her along, which is really awesome. And she made me look very, very cool. <laughs> nice, nice shout out to the, to the stunt performer there. Uh, I, I don't know if you're aware of this. You've been fan cast a, very, a lot of times in different Marvel and DC roles like Black Cat, Invisible Woman, just very, I, I'm curious, have you ever uh, had a comic book character you've wanted to play or like flirted with a, a movie like that before? I totally would do it, 100%. Um, We're really going to welcome you in there. I feel like I need to read more comics and get into it because they are really fun. Yes, I need to. That's the guy's book right there. And the last thing, the last thing, because this has been a fun one for everybody. If you could see the G.I. Joe characters you guys are bringing to life in this first movie, crossover just in a fantasy world with any other franchise, whether it's the Avengers, the Justice League, the Fast and Furious family, the Transformers, Star Wars, Walking Dead, who would you think would be fun to jump into their world and uh, play with? What if we got, <laughs> like, Lord of the Rings meets oh. Snake Eyes. And you guys would thrive there. Tolkien, Snake Eyes mix, where there's magic and elves and hobbits, but also crazy ninjas. That would be kind of cool, maybe. No. I'm, I listen. I'm going to write a letter. I'm going to make. I'm going to see if we can make it happen. <laughs> listen. Thank you so much for the time. Congrats on, on joining this franchise. I hope to see more of you in this role in the future. Thank you so much. Hey, how are you? I am very good. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. I got to see Snake Eye, so I'm doing really well. I'm excited okay. to talk. Uh, for, uh, listen, Ruka, I just want to hear your introduction to Akiko, because this is a character who is new to the G.I. Joe world, mm -hmm. and you're bringing mm -hmm. her to life for the first time. Tell me how right. you were introduced to this character. How I was introduced to the character. Yeah. Um, well, um, I knew that she was this um, brand new character um, who is int being introduced to the G.I. Joe universe through this film. 
Um, and um, so that was very exciting because um, I got to create the character from scratch. And she's basically um, the Irish Kage's head of security who, um, and her back backstory isn't really um, revealed in the film, but we learned that she was once an outsider to the clan, much like Snake Eyes is, um, who kind of was taken in um, by the clan and trained uh, really hard and rose through the ranks to become the head of security. Um, and the fact that, you know, her backstory was is mystery really gave me that freedom to like, you know, discuss things with like Robert, the director, and get really, um, you know, creative. And had I had so much fun um, kind of coming up with her backstory with Robert and the team. Um, and hopefully we'll get to explore that in the future movies. But um, yeah, and she's a very um, uh, capable fighter. Um, she's very loyal and protective of the clan. So she has a very interesting dynamic with both Storm Shadow, um, who she butt heads with quite a lot over what's best for the clan, and with Snake Eyes, who she's very wary of because he's this like complete stranger um, that Tommy suddenly brought home. But at the same time, she's kind of intrigued by him because they they have that there's something about him that reminds her of herself. So. Oh, now, now you got me crying for sequels. I want to see that backstory <laughs> because that is seeded throughout. That's really cool mm -hmm. that you that you guys developed that. Uh, Snake Eyes, when he arrives at the Arashkage clan, he's training to become a warrior. He's learning fighting and loyalty and patience and all a lot of things, not just using fists. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, as, as a member of the cast, I imagine it had to be a somewhat similar experience learning choreography, learning to trust your, your co-stars. I love to, like, are there parallels there? What was that experience like? I mean, yeah, for sure. I mean, absolutely. Because um, I think, you know, learning these, how to fight definitely involves, um, you know, trusting your scene partner, your, you know, um, people you're fighting with. Um, and yeah, like, just like, you know, losing your ego and just focus on, you know, just putting in the hard work or, and all that stuff. So definitely. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And so you emerge in this film as a really strong female character. There's a lot of badass women with a lot of potential to do really cool things. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm so, and I'm curious because you're, you're going to play a character who a lot of young women are going to have a chance to look up to now for you, who are some of the action stars or characters that you look up to who, who made you think this could be a role that you could play one day? Um, I love all the female characters in Studio Ghibli films um, who are all very like strong, um, independent women like Naushka and um, yeah, even like characters like Kiki who learns how to, um, you know, make life for herself and stuff like that. So there's been a lot of like anime female characters that I loved growing up. Um, and I kind of wish I had this film uh, when I was a child, because I think it does have a lot of like strong female characters who are very cool. I love that. My, my girlfriend actually just just had me watch Spirited Away for the first oh, time. Yeah? The Great. Ghibli films are so good. So that I, I know, love right? <laughs> Well, <laughs> listen, thank you so much for the time. Congrats on Snake Eyes and uh, enjoy the ride. Thank you so much. Hello, Ursula. Thanks for talking today. Hello, Brandon. Thank you. How are you? Listen, I would have done this uh, in Spanish with you, pero yo puedo hablar mejor que yo puedo entender, so I have to, uh, I have to stick with English here. Don't worry at all. <laughs> I, I, my, my brain is just a little bit like because of the English, but I'm going to do my best. This is my last interview in English. Oh, well, let's let's wrap this day up uh, really nicely for you. I want to start at the beginning, though, of your journey with Snake Eyes, because you're playing Baroness, a character who was introduced in the first G.I. Joe comic back in 1982. What was your introduction to this character? How did you get to know her? Well, um, I wasn't very familiar with the um, G.I. Joe's movement when I started um, when they called me to to play the Baroness. So everything was super new and different for me, you know. I wasn't feeling that pressure, which is pretty cool um, because I was like, OK, let's see what happens with this with this character. But I perfectly remember when I wrote the script and I, I fell in love with the Baroness. I was like, OK, I don't know anything about uh, G.I. Joe, but <clears throat> I do know that I want to play this character. That's awesome. She's super fun. She's yeah. playful. You, I mean... It was also the first villain I, I in my career 
So I knew I, I would be able to, to, to do different things, you know, because when you are doing the bad person, you're allowed to do whatever you want. Oh, you, you brought it to life so well. And like you, you emerge immediately as this powerful, badass woman who's like in control of everything around her. What's it like to get the opportunity on set to establish like this character who is in control of all the men around her? She's, she's leading the charge, like, and she's so powerful and smart and cunning. What was that like for you? Yes, I always say that she's the most dangerous person in the room. Yeah. So it makes you feel super powerful. That's all I can say, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome i felt yeah. invisible i, I felt bet. yes i mean have you uh she's oh. also um at the same time she's also with with this sense of humor so you can tell that she's enjoying everything she does you know yeah. so i was enjoying too when i, I was uh, playing the baroness I love it. Uh, now, the, also, the character, like, there's so many characters she's tied to in the G.I. Joe Lord Destro. Like, the Cobra Civil War is a really cool story. She's almost died a zillion times. Have you developed any of that history, like, that we didn't get to see yet in the movie that you've kind of fantasized about maybe in the future? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Can, I, I lost you for a, for a oh, minute. Oh, no worries. Um, have you, have you kind of, like, talked with Robert or any of the writers to talk about, you know, characters like Destro, who she's tied to in the lore, or, like, the Cobra Civil War stories, and just like, the near-death experiences that she's gone through and fantasized about bringing any of that to the screen? Yes. Um, I had a lot of conversations with Robert because, you know, we really wanted to do something different with the character. Um, but, you know, at the same time, it's a, char it's a character that already exists, so... Um, yeah, we were talking about going a little bit farther with uh, her sense of humor. She's uh, uh, with with her cynicism. Can you say that in English? So, yeah, cynicism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we had long conversations, but the most important thing for both of us was to keep her playful. I love it. Yeah. You know? must, my, my last thing I have to ask, because my mother will kill me if I don't, is that the last season of Money Heist is coming and she's obsessed. She wants to know, is this truly the end for you as Tokyo? Is it truly what? Sorry? Is, is that truly the end for you as Tokyo? Can we see you in that Money Heist role ever again after season five? Who knows that? <laughs> I'm in the clear. Listen, I, I did my do part. I, do you think I'm allowed to, to answer that question? <laughs> my mother would have killed me if I didn't ask. I had to. No, I had don't. to. <laughs> she, has, she has to watch it. Listen, I, I got to let you go. Thank you so much for the time and congratulations on, on Snake Eyes. Great work. Thank you.